Hey, what's up guys? I'm gonna compare these mesh Wi-Fi 6 systems to each other. So they have the latest wireless standards, Wi-Fi 6, and they're all backwards compatible with previous wireless standards. So they should work with your Wi-Fi devices at home. Now, these are all tri-band systems and that's kind of what I wanted to focus on in this video. And that's because tri-band has two distinct advantages over dual band, you might have seen that term. So the first advantage, which I think is the major one, is the fact that when you have tri-band, it has an additional band, as its name implies, compared to a dual band. Now with that additional band, you get an additional 5 gigahertz frequency, and that's used as a dedicated wireless backhaul. So what does that mean? That means if you're getting a mesh system, which is you know two or more devices creating a single network, uh, so if I take the Orbi for instance, if you wirelessly connect these to each other, meaning if you hook up the main one to your modem and then the secondary one, you just you know take it one or two rooms away and hook it up to power, well, they will wirelessly talk to each other and expand your Wi-Fi coverage. But the cool thing about tri-band is they'll communicate on a dedicated band, that on that dedicated frequency, so they're not sharing it with any other Wi-Fi devices. Translation, you typically get faster speeds when you get tri-band mesh systems and you're using wireless backhaul. Now, if you're not using wireless backhaul, tri-band has an, another benefit. So when you hook these up to each other via ethernet, which is called ethernet backhaul or wired backhaul, and whatever I'm saying applies to all the other ones, you basically get an additional band and that additional band can now be used for Wi-Fi devices to connect to that as well. Now, why is that important? Well, when you connect Wi-Fi devices like your phone, as an example, they're sharing those speeds with all the other Wi-Fi devices, sharing those basically network speeds. And I'm not talking about internet speeds yet. They're also sharing that as well, but this is just network speeds. So when you connect a whole bunch of things to it, because they're sharing, they typically slow down. Well, the cool thing about tri-band is you have extra capacity because you have this additional band there. So that's why uh, tri-band has that other advantage, even if you're not using wireless backhaul. But being tri-band, tri-bands typically cost more. So that's obviously something else to keep in mind. But let's just start. So. And I want to also say that I've done individual reviews on each one of these mesh systems and I'll put links in the description below if you guys are interested, uh, go check those out. And while you're down there, I always use the word mesh and I keep saying mesh uh, because these are obviously mesh Wi-Fi's. So I'm just going to say smash that subscribe button down below because someone actually commented on one of my other videos and I was, I was laughing for that. Specs. So starting with the Euro Pro 6, it covers up to 3,500 square feet as a two-pack. It's obviously a tri-band. It has two auto-sensing Ethernet ports, which means you can hook up any one you want to your modem, and then the other one you're free to connect to another device. If you need more Ethernet ports, you just hook it up to a switch. But auto-sensing literally means it'll automatically detect which one it's using. And it also has a speed rating of AX4200 and includes the Zigbee Smart Home Hub. So what is that? The Zigbee is basically used to connect to some smart home devices. So not all smart home devices require a hub, but this one has the Zigbee and some of them do require the Zigbee. So this one has it built in and it supports internet of up to gigabit. The Orbi covers up to 5,000 square feet and obviously a tri-band. The router version has four ethernet ports, which one's dedicated for your internet and you're free to use the other three. And just like with the Eero, you can expand your ethernet ports if you hook any one of these three to a switch. Now, if this thing actually supports up to 2.5 gigabits per second internet speed, so in that case, you actually have to use the first two and then you're free to use the other two to connect to other devices. The satellite only has two Ethernet ports, which are both auto sensing, so it doesn't matter which one you use. So if you're going to do wired backhaul, which is a uh, an Ethernet between these two, then you're free to use any one you want. 
or if you're using wireless backhaul, you can actually hook up these ports and get internet to other stuff. So as an example, if these are wirelessly connected and this is near your Xbox and you want to hook it up with ethernet to your Xbox, then you can do that. That works fine. In fact, that's true for all of these, just as a heads up. And speed rating is AX4200 and no smart home hub. In fact, the only one with the smart home hub is the Eero Pro 6 and retails for $449. The Asus XT8 covers up to 5,500 square feet, obviously tri-band, and it has four ethernet ports. In fact, both of these are identical. The internet goes to your blue one, which handles internet speeds of up to 2.5 gigabits per second, and you're free to use the three other ones to connect to other devices. You get a little power switch here as well, and you get a USB 3.0. Now, if you're wondering, what's that used for? Well, you can actually hook up your external hard drive and make it into a network hard drive just by hooking it up to this. So that's actually pretty cool and the, and the fact is, again, these are identical so you can actually make two external hard drives into network drives that everyone on your network can see. Now, in terms of speed rating, it's an AX6600, so it's definitely on the faster side. Also retails for 449, which I mentioned earlier. The TP-Link Deco X90 covers up to 6,000 square feet. Obviously, tri-band has two Ethernet ports. If you're gonna use, if your internet speeds are faster than the gig, then you'd have to use the 2.5 gig port. But other than that, they're auto sensing ports, and it has a speed rating of AX6600, which is really, really good. The, the same as the ASUS, and retails for $549. Speed test. Now my internet speeds are around 480 megabits per second download and 24 megabits per second upload. Very important to note, no matter which mesh Wi-Fi you get, you're capped at up to what your internet modem is providing you in terms of internet access. Now if you get a better mesh Wi-Fi, that can improve your local network speeds, meaning if I'm on my laptop and I'm transferring something to my network drive, then those speeds can typically improve with a better mesh Wi-Fi system. But in terms of internet speeds, you're capped at what your modem provides. In terms of devices, I use the iPhone 12 Pro, which is a Wi-Fi 6 device, and the Pixel 5, which is a Wi-Fi 5 device. To keep this video consistent with all my other videos, I pretty much have five different options. And I'm going to go with those options to keep it very consistent. So for some of them, I might skip an option. For another one, I might skip a different option. So, But I will tell you guys what I am talking about as I'm explaining it so it will make sense. So with the Eero Pro 6, we have option one, which is the router by itself. So you actually don't need to get more than one. With that, you get full speeds as long as you're close. With option number three, that's basically when you get two Eero Pro 6 routers and you connect them to each other via ethernet. That's called wired backhaul or ethernet backhaul. And that also gives you very good speeds. So full speeds there as well. Option four, is when you do wireless backhaul, when you get two Eero Pro 6 routers and you connect them to each other wirelessly. And I also got full speeds with that as well. Netgear Orbi speed test. Option one, router by itself, get full speeds. Option two, because this is a router and a satellite, we're gonna go with option two, which is basically wireless backhaul, so these are connected to each other wirelessly, and you also get full speeds that way. And then option number five is, again, because this is a router and this is a satellite, option number five is when you connect a router and a satellite via ethernet, and you get full speeds that way as well. Asus Zen Wi-Fi X-T8. Router by itself, you get full speeds. Option number three, is when you hook them up via wired backhaul, so via ethernet to each other, you get full speeds that way. When you hook them up to each other wirelessly, you get full speeds that way as well. So very good results for the Asus X-T8. And finally, the TP-Link Deco X90, the most expensive of the bunch. When you're using the router by itself, you get full speeds. When you hook them up via ethernet backhaul or wired backhaul, option three, you get full speeds. Option number four, which you hook up wirelessly to each other, 
you actually don't get full speeds. You get close to full speeds, but not quite there. A little bit disappointing, but at the same time, I have to say that the Deco X90 very recently came out and they will probably push some firmware updates to address that and probably fix that. But at the time of this recording, I'm not getting full speeds. But I feel like there is hope because when I had originally gotten the Eero Pro 6, I also wasn't getting full speeds until they did one or two firmware updates. Then I noticed and then I saw, oh, okay, I am getting full speeds with that one. So I think there's hope with the TP-Link, but as of now, it's not quite there. Range test time. Now, before I get into range tests, I quickly want to say that range varies by location. In terms of, you know, are there a lot of walls? Are some of those walls concrete? Is there a lot of wireless interference? All of those things can hurt your range. Now, I'm in a place with a lot of walls and a lot of wireless interference, so I don't exactly get the best range. But I did test all of these in the same exact scenarios with the same exact devices with everything's pretty much identical. And so consistent to each other, those are the results that I have. Now, if I take any one of these to my parents' house, I can easily get way more range than I can at my place. Okay, so starting off with the Euro Pro 6, they claim 3,500 square feet, but I feel like they're almost either they're accurate or they're understating it because this thing goes up to 70 feet and it's still usable speeds and even when you're farther away you're still getting pretty good speed so very impressed with the Eero Pro 6 with the Netgear Orbi they claim 5,000 square feet so you're thinking like I, I mean I was thinking okay this thing is gonna obliterate the Eero Pro 6, but no, it actually got less range. It pretty much got the same range, but at those ranges, it was getting less speed. So the Eero Pro 6 in terms of range actually beat this, even though the Orbi was claiming up to 5,000 square feet. And, and that's what I'm trying to say. That's what I was trying to say earlier on because coverage, it also, you know, it depends a lot on that, but it also depends on where these places are that the manufacturer is testing them are they testing them in like super open areas with no wireless interference around they're like yeah that's the best number they're not exactly testing them in super congested areas and that's why they say up to but it's crazy because the Eero Pro 6 did a lot better than this even though it was rated for lower coverage so very important that I didn't know until I tested okay so then we have the Asus Zen Wi-Fi. Now this thing covers up to 5,500 square feet. It goes all the way until 105 feet. So when you compare this 5,500 to the Orbeez 5000, this thing is literally destroying the Orbeez 5000 because it's going way farther. And in fact, this actually went the farthest of the bunch. So, so yeah, very, very impressed with the Asus in terms of range. And finally, we have the TP-Link, which claims up to 6,000 square feet. So this one has the highest claim. Now, while this does destroy the Eero Pro 6 and the Netgear Orbi, I feel like it's not quite as good as the Asus. And that's because doing the speed test, it went up to 90 feet. Now, it was almost there, but you, you have to understand that they're saying they cover up to 6,000 square feet and ASUS is saying 5,500, but in reality, ASUS is actually getting more, it, at least from where I'm testing. Maybe someone else could get different results, but these are the results that I got. Okay, now really quick, I just wanted to touch on the app. In terms of the app, they all have normal good apps. So they're not, you know, they're not bad apps or anything like that. And they all give you like data usage and they all give you guest access in terms of you can make guest Wi-Fi, so you can see the passwords. They all have apps on the phone, I should say. So you don't necessarily have to go to a browser. Now with some of these, you can go to a browser. Like with the Orbi, you actually get more options when you go to the browser. I feel like it's the same with the Asus when you go to the browser. I feel like you get more options on the browser. But 
In terms of apps, they're all really good. The TP-Link has one of the easiest user interfaces and is probably the f with the fastest response. So I really like the TP-Link's app, uh, but they're all really good. But here's the thing, and they all give the basic functionality. I think if you want the most customizability, I think ASUS has the most case customizability. It, it has so many options that I'm just ignoring most of them because I don't need that many options. It It is crazy, it gives a crazy amount of configurations with this. Now, here's something I wanted to touch on because some of these actually require subscriptions if you want additional features and some of these don't. So with the Eero Pro 6, if you want parental controls, you actually have to pay for that. It's not expensive, but the fact that it doesn't come with parental controls and the routers, the mesh Wi-Fi itself is really not exactly cheap. I'm, I'm a bit surprised that they didn't include that. So I, there is a negative there with the Eero Pro 6 requiring a subscription. Now the Netgear Orbi also requires a subscription, but it looks like they have a free version. So the Netgear Orbi uses the app called Circle and their free version lets you like pause stuff on certain devices and for certain users. And you can put some filters, but if you want more controls, then you actually have to pay a subscription for, which I believe is $50 a year, or if you're paying monthly, it's $5 a month, which costs a little bit more. So you saved a little more when you pay yearly. The ASUS actually has everything for free, which is really good, which is what I would expect especially at this price point. And the TP-Link has a lot of options for free, but they also have a paid subscription as well. But they do give you a decent amount of options for free. So that's, that's pretty good there. Before I pick the winner, I quickly wanna say that it's kind of hard to pick the winner. And the reason is because they're all good in, in their own respects. And they might depend on you know what you're looking for. Is range really important to you? Is speed really important to you? Do you have an existing one? Uh, you know, it depends on your internet speeds, like all of that stuff plays and especially price as well. Sometimes these things go on sale. So all of those things can even change my mind on, oh, I would rather get that one now instead of this one. So it's kind of hard to pick the winner. Uh, I will say this, just a general overall opinion. Eero can't go wrong with it. Nike Orbi can't go wrong with it. Asus can't go wrong with it. I would probably avoid the Deco X90 for now until they fix their firmware issues. And I also feel like this one, because these are available at lower prices, I probably wouldn't pay the extra price to get the TP-Link. Just being honest with you guys. But the winner has to be the ASUS. And the reason is because, you know, retail price costs the same as the Orbi and it's $50 more than the Eero but you're getting a few cool things with that. You're getting extra ethernet ports, you know, on both. You're getting a USB on both. So that's that, that seems like a plus. You're getting parental controls included in the price, so you don't have to pay a subscription for it. You're getting a whole bunch of options with that. And you're getting phenomenal range. You're also getting really good speeds as well. I mean, you got the same with the Eero. You also got really good speeds and pretty good range, but you're getting much better range with the ASUS. So uh, from the, the current prices and stuff, I think maybe the ASUS is probably the best. But if you went with the Eero, uh, like I've had these for a few months and honestly, they're really good. So I I can't really, you know, if you said, oh, I want to get the Orbi, then yeah, I, I think that's fine because it's, I think what I'm trying to say is the only thing I would pretty much avoid right now is the TP-Link. That's the only one that I'd say, again, it's still really good, but I feel like it's a little high for what you're getting in terms of price. If the price was lower, then yeah, I would say, okay, yeah, definitely. Or if they lower the price, then yeah, definitely. But I think at its current price, I feel like it's a little high. So yeah, anyways, if you guys enjoyed this video, then smash that like button and smash that subscribe button below. I had to say it. And uh, yeah, if you guys have any questions or comments, please leave in the comment sections below. I do try my best to answer them. Thank you guys for watching and thank you to all my current subscribers.